So this is Venu here. <clears throat> I have totally 10 years experience. I started my career as a SAP BW consultant initially. I worked on uh, SAP BW right from 2.0 onwards to the current version 7.40 and all with BW on HANA also. And later I moved myself into a Bob J area, which is reporting a part of ETL, not completely, but reporting area as a full business objects enterprise and then uh, HANA database. Currently, I'm working on uh, application powered by HANA projects and standalone HANA projects. So during this training, I'll share all my working knowledge and I'll give you uh, complete real time scenarios. Uh, at least a complete one POC I'm expecting to provide to you. Completely two different sources, SAP ECC and Oracle, which can be possible to replicate the scenario in our system. But in fact, in the real time, that could be any Oracle system or IBM system. Based on that, what are the tools you can use to replicate the data into HANA? And then how to create the models, how to create a BobJ reports, and how to assign the end user. Right from the source to end user. Everything I will show you with hands-on practice. And all the performance tuning techniques can be discussed here. So the object of this training is after this training, uh, you should be able to work as SAP HANA individual consultant. And then uh, you should be able to uh, attempt your uh, SAP HANA certification. That is C underscore HANA IMP 141. That is what currently running. This is for the HANA development and implementation. And there is another one which is not for us. That is HANA Tech 140. Something like a HANA admin. So here we are going to cover this is in terms of HANA analytics point of view. Okay. This is something like the person who has worked on the ABAP they are writing, generating the back reports. The persons who are worked on data warehouse don't consider as only BWS data warehouse. There is n number of data warehouse. The persons how they have extracted data, model the data, reported the data. Same kind of view we are going to cover that. Okay. So here we are going to cover HRP HANA versions, uh, HANA 1.0, SPS 9, we are going to cover. version of HANA. Okay. So, I am expecting to provide to you uh, the Q100. It is uh, HANA basics to prepare for your SAP 141 for SAP HANA 141 certification and uh, HA300. HANA implementation and modeling talk. By reading these two documents, you can uh, go for the certification. C underscore HANA IMP 141. This is just a theoretical concept, but in a practical, we'll cover everything in a practical scenario. Whatever the real time scenarios I worked on, what are the challenges I faced, everything will be discussed. Is that clear? That is what the object of this training. Let us start with our model now, SAP HANA database. I hope you already might have done some uh, background research on top of this SAP HANA, what uh, it is and all. Uh, just one minute. Hit, can I have your introduction? Hit. Hello. Yeah, Deep. Uh, can I have your introduction? Yeah. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Dipti. I have around four years of experience totally into a different uh, environment, actually, technology into virtualization and all those. 
but uh, I had the knowledge of SAP ABAP earlier, but I didn't work into real time. But now I am planning to move to SAP. So as this is upcoming technology, I mean, which is in market, so I am planning to. Fine, then. no problem. Just to make uh, understand what you are from which background. Yeah, yeah. 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 So here uh, the scenario, so which I am going to discuss. Um, one thing, native Hana. Uh, it means standalone, Hana. Huh? It's a simple meaning that from ECC or CRM or it can be anything, any source or SAP or non SAP system. Using business objects, data services or SLT replication tool, we are loading the data into HANA database and then we are creating the Vivo reports. This is what the landscape. And the second one is application powered by HANA. When I say application powered by HANA, for example, today your SAP ECC 6.0 or something, whatever the HP level and all, is running on traditional database, probably MS SQL or MaxDB, something like that. So you would like to uh, migrate your database to HANA database. Or else probably your SAP BI system, which is running on 7.30, you would like to uh, upgrade SAP BW uh, 7.3 or 7.4, whatever it is, on top of another database. It can be your SAP BPC application. Something like that, anything, application powered by HANA. So here we are going to cover SAP BW powered by HANA. Okay, and the second one is uh, sidecar approach. Hana as a secondary database. So these are the three concepts we will cover. Okay, out of these, these two concepts will be covered. Sorry for that. So out of these, these two concepts can be covered fully hands-on and you also get the practice. And this I can show you which I worked in the scenario. This you may not uh, get hands-on, but still you can see the uh, explanation. In fact, I'll run the show. You. Okay. These are the three methods which I am going to cover as a HANA because HANA is a white used one different persons can use in a different perspectives but here i am going to use this is what the method standalone hana for a hana analytics point of view application powered by hana today what our sap system is running on third party database will be moved on hana database and hana as a sidecar everything everything will be discussed just now i'm going to uh, scroll my ppt okay already uh, i can explain what is slt and all everything is in a clear manner so HANA stands for High Performance Analytic Appliance. HANA stands for High Performance Analytic Appliance. For example, in a simple general meaning, appliance means where it is readily available, just plug and play. Install and use it, that's it. Like the same, HANA is a database. Whereas this is the combination of software and hardware. This is the combination of software and hardware where there is already pre-configured hardware is available we need to purchase from a certified hardware vendors by sap for this sap and a hardware so ibm hp cisco Fujitsu, intel dell all these are the different different partners for sap to sell this sap hana hardware and we will purchase SAP HANA appliance software from SAP AZ company. So all together, a box will give it to you. So earlier what you are doing that, you are purchasing Dell laptop in a Dell laptop showroom. 
you are purchasing or microsoft os or something any os cd from the microsoft two different places but today these two is together delivering now that is what our plans in a simple very basic understanding for all of us so hana is a database but what is what type of this database as to see any other regular or dbms concepts everything is relational database management but the way of storage is in memory not like a traditional database in memory and it is a hybrid database first i will discuss about what is hybrid database then i will move on to in memory database <clears throat> there are few databases for example ms sql mysql max db or whatever the other databases you are using these are suitable for oltp applications for example in our sap that is sap ecc or any other erp system or business system where that needs to read each and every row by row i can say that that is a kind of row store for example because in ecc or any sales system inventory system crm system each and every row should be updated to update the new data whereas kind of oracle database which is suitable for the more of reporting side olam if you are from sap side sap bw or any other data warehouse that is any other data warehouse doesn't mean only sap bw because in the reporting what you would like to see that most of the times only columns finally what you would like to see that that's it it's a aggregated columns column store that is nothing but but hana will support for these two types meaning that it will support for oltp and it will support for ola meaning that it will support row store database and it will support column store database where it is going to be your oltpa because earlier we are running on our oltp nothing but what we are discussing as a sap ecc or not on third party database nothing but uh, like this and your olap is running on something like the oracle database today sap would like to create a single data platform this is what hana data that is what olta which is what sap would like to prepare down the line. they already started to create instead of storing your operations into erp system loading the data into historical data warehousing and then reporting that's a lengthy process they would like to create a single scenario where that is olt so ara will support column store and row store meaning that for oltp applications and olap applications that is what hybrid database ana so why do we need sap hana today it's very simple and common as of now all the business users are updating their data into oltp system as many of people from sap ecc that's a <coughs> yeah, sap site that is from kind of sap ecc or any of your crm system probably for the other person ramesh who is from rk any other erp system business system we need to say that and thereafter they are uploading their data into data warehousing system in our case this is going to be sap pw for example otherwise any data warehouse like zd adwords airwin any other database also and on top of that they are generating the reports these reports can be bobj reports cognos reports microstats reports anything we can now what is happening in this scenario we are not getting the real time data and even our reports are also running slow why we are not getting the real time data for example today is your credit card or phone bill or something any other due date is the last day you have paid today morning meaning that you will get the message immediately thanks for your payment your payment will be updated in the next 24 to 48 hours or at least 12 hours maybe like in this case 
so you got the message from the oltp system whatever you made payment that is at your location where you pay that has not reached to your head office because from different sources they are loading this data after business hours so during 10 to 5 whatever has happened is uploading into only your operation system current uh, ecc all these are loading into data warehousing system after the business hours meaning that if you paid yesterday today you will not get the call you paid it today that has not reached the historical data then you may still get the call sometimes saying that today is due date please make your payment but still you have already being paid already there in turn you are giving something like a reference number also meaning that they does not have the real time data in their history they are not able to track every minute at least one day older data and even sometimes when we are talking with the customer care people they will ask us shall i place your call on hold for some time because their application might be running slow or you may have requested for a whole uh, historical data or maybe some delay in that information or they'll say that uh, sorry for the delay this information will be updated in the next after searching for a long time so basically there is a delay to answer the customer survey to answer the customer questions or to take the decision based on the data today customers are expecting very fast service if you observe earlier for our couriers it has taken 3 to 4 days but today that is maximum one and a half day if you are within the city if you do it on morning it will get delivered by the evening something like a faster service and every day your database is going to add a new record so again that is taking time to read all these to process all that is where the latency is everyone are clear why there is latency and about this model yes okay i am going ahead now so to avoid this latency as you can see that from different sources and different transactions as i said something from ecc something of oracle something from ibm and all then using the etl extraction transfer loading then we are loading the data into data warehousing and then we are reporting the data in this current scenario traditional scenario at least we have one day older data today what are the jobs we are monitoring that is not today's job as it is job today morning we are going to office and monitoring that process chain our job has run or not if that is fake we are running that that is yesterday's one not today's one one day older data to avoid that latency sap has came up with in memory computing technique that is what sap hana database now how this database can allow us to analyze the massive amount of data on a real time basis how this can be possible so let me draw a simple picture about our traditional database and about our hana database so when we are purchasing a computer we will give the quotation for a updated processor like something like i3 i5 i7 whatever something like that and the ram uh, 6 gb ram 8 gb ram something like that and hard disk can be 500 gb or 250 gb 1 tb if something you need huge amount of data so our data is going to store in the hard disk for example i have started my business in a 10 years way back that is 8 terabytes to date it reached okay and the ram is for the purpose of it's a memory but it's a just a cache not like a permanent memory and it is for the read purpose majorly in the traditional database even a small question yes so when you say uh, that sap hana is an on memory system and uh, because of this on memory system the, uh, the data will be stored on a ram the data will be much faster to retrieval mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Right now, we are uh, actually there is uh, like big data system which are coming on a cluster. Like the we can improve the RAM. Uh, uh, how many systems we want, we can increase and the optimization of the code also is increasing nowadays. So hmm. why do I need to exactly go to the SAP HANA system? Means if anybody asks me like, uh, why do you give me the advice of uh, going for SAP HANA where I can get a cheaper cost of the Hadoop system? Okay, I'll tell you the answer. Just give me one minute. I have the answer for you. Uh, before that, I need to complete two slides. Then I'll give you answer for that question. Okay. Okay. So as a regular, that is going to hit on your hard disk where your data is there, metadata and data not. Then that is reading the data. Then that is loading the data into them. Then that is processing. Whereas in the HANA database, but this is this hardware is different. That is what we have discussed right from the beginning. So even here also, you have the component, but these components like a processor, a hard disk, are all very different one. Same eight terabytes of the data and your ten years. So in the HANA database, as you know, what will happen when you do start the server, all the data will get compressed and then that is moving into the RAM. So all these data is getting compressed and then loading into the RAM. By that time, it could be just four terabytes of the data, and but still, you were ten years amount of the same. Meaning that you are having the data at the two places. One is hard disk, second one is at the RAM. Today, it is acting as a data source. Earlier, RAM was mainly speed, and that is a cache, not like a permanent. So, in this case, what will happen when you execute the query? All your executions processing is taking place in the RAM, and then immediately that is displaying the data. Here, as yes, RAM is costly, obviously, but if you compare in the history, uh, right from at least 90s, forget about 80s also, some persons may know that, some persons may not know. At least from 90s to this 2015, RAM prices are coming down. Okay, maybe in future still that will that, that will goes down. So you can expect cheaper price in the RAM also. Whenever you load the new data also, first that will load into the RAM. And thereafter, we need to perform delta match. We need to perform delta match to commit the data permanently to hard disk. And you can selectively load the data from hard disk to RAM. And you can selectively unload the data from the RAM. Meaning that it doesn't mean you should have all the 10 years data in the RAM. By default, when you do start the server, all the data will get compressed and then loading into the RAM. If you don't want to load entire trainings of the data, you can selectively unload that from the RAM. And you can selectively load it. Even whenever the new data is coming also, that is getting into the RAM only. You need to perform delta match to, per to permanently commit that to the hard disk. Because only hard disk is the permanent data storage still at this point of time. Only thing is, you are processing, I mean execution, all the queries are running on RAM instead of the hard disk. That is only the major change. Is that clear for everyone? Are any doubts at this uh, RAM and all? No. So as we discussed, that is what the difference between traditional database and HANA database. In the traditional database, every time that is sitting on the hard disk to read the data from the database and then to load that. That is where the latency is. Whereas in HANA, Today we placed everything in the RAM, so it is immediately processing the data. You don't need to wait. That is how you are getting the execution will be processed, will be faster. Execution process will be faster compared to traditional database. Now when you call to customer care people, they will execute their codes immediately. Though how much of data historically also you have, but it will be executed immediately due to RAM size. Earlier the maximum we would have seen that 64 GB. But today it is available 
right from 1 terabyte to 100 terabyte of file so here we are avoiding the usage of the hard disk it will be useful only at the system booting time and at the delta load time as i said whenever new data is loaded remaining all the ways all the analytical applications all the reporting applications are purely relying on the ram as a data source and even when you load the new data also first it will load the data into ram and thereafter the same data will be copied into the hard disk that is how in memory database hana database is working okay hello yes uh, sir uh, initially when the data is uh, coming to ram huh. if any uh, system has crashed crashed hmm. so data will be lost right so there will be logs there will be logs at the ram level also there is a persistence layer permanently your hard disk and logs will be there based on that logs you can retrieve that when logs are so residing in ram right yes mm -hmm. when in the backup and recovery i will explain that because i have got oh. backup and recovery how the log is created and how that is rolling back again compared to oracle database i mean traditional database to in memory it are coming with that is getting stopped and from where where they are stopped how can you do that as a typical okay. backup and recovery because i am not going to cover like some admin side okay. i said it's purely okay. analytics and development part so as we discuss hana is a combination of hardware and software hana is a combination of software and hardware here i am discussing about the hardware this is just about the non production system for example for our sandbox or your development system so the processor is in the intel there is a series xenon series e7 or e5 something like a series can be and the memory you can see 128 gb ram earlier it was 64 gb now today minimum we can start with at least you have the 64 gb also still that's a 128 gb onwards you can start with and storage data storage one network you should have the faster uh, network bandwidth operating system right from the beginning it is supporting suzy linux enterprise server right from sps01 from sps08 onwards it is supporting red hat linux also it will not support your windows or linux uh, unix machines either suzy linux or red hat linux os only these two can be supported other windows machines will not be supported at this point of time right from the beginning suzy linux enterprise server just recently from sps 8 onwards red hat linux also is supported so how can you see the hardware hana hardware side how do you know that how much hana hardware you need that so you need to run certain sap note i mean as per sap note you need to run some, uh, certain reports to know that what is the current database size if you are using oracle what is the size of that and you need to forecast what is for the next 3 to 5 years based on that you can see your hardware sap and hardware partner that it be ibm let it be hp and all those person will help you to see this hardware size to understand that how much ram you need so there are different sizes of the hardware are available like how we can choose our shirts and cars like the same small medium large like the same we have small system medium luxury systems so 128 gb ram main memory out of that data will be compressed only into 64 gb ram like that you have 1 terabytes of the ram also is available today right from 1 terabyte to 100 terabyte. so there are different vendors to provide different uh, i mean their own hardware side in different sizes one thing is very clear from sap to all hardware vendors they should not give any extra mileage on this hardware they should not give any extra mileage meaning that if ibm is selling hardware 
they should not <coughs> add any accelerated point. This can be benefited only to IBM or only to HP. Across all the vendors, hardware details will be definitely same. They should not give any extra mileage. Otherwise, other vendors will get affected. That is the reason. So it will start from, I have taken IBM product. <clears throat> if you need a small system, that will start from $36,400. If you need high-end system, that is $2,6500. That is what the cost of HANA hardware. That is what the cost of HANA hardware. But maybe definitely in future, drastically that has to go down. Practically, otherwise there, there is no way to sell this product. I can uh, understand that because everyone thinking today it is a cost-less product. If SAP wants to sell this, they have to decrease the price. There is no other way. Think about in a mature persons. Think about in a mature way. Okay. The first question: Every HANA consultant or every HANA student or any anyone. Customer is asking about it's a costless product. That's it. Nothing else. There is no second thought. But still, whatever the <coughs> um, new points they are providing to accelerate the data loading, data processing, and everything is editing the customer to purchase the product. That is why customers are purchasing this product. That is one reason. Second reason, ultimately, right from the beginning, what SAP is doing forcing the customers to purchase whatever they have. That is it. Not by impressing. They are forcing the customer to purchase. That's it. In fact, every vendor will do the same thing, right? They will not understand what customer is expecting. They will prepare a product by taking some inputs from the customer and more inputs from the side and then prepare a product and then to sell out. Now, this is what the complete technical architecture we will purchase SAP HANA hardware from IBM company. There are different series yes, like EX5, EX6, something like that. Based on your size of hardware which you arrived, small, medium, large, you will purchase this hardware from IBM company. And then we will purchase Suzy Linux Enterprise OS. And as we discussed, Lead had also these days. And IBM is providing a file system as a GPFS, Central Parallel File System, which is new, faster uh, access to the applications. And then we purchase SAP HANA apply, I mean SAP HANA software from SAP company. On top of that, we are running SAP applications. This is what the complete technical picture, right from the hardware to application. Hardware, OS, file system, software, application. So, except that uh, I think Ramesh or Nagaj, someone has asked me about why should I go for this SAP HANA. Any other questions? Except that question so far. Can I move on? So this is what standalone HANA consultant I'm going to discuss first about what is the role of standalone HANA consultant. From the different source systems can be ECC, can be BW, can be any other non sap Please don't think that by seeing this picture, we will not told that from non sap It can be any SAP or non sap But the problem with SAP, they'll promote something like uh, every time they created something like rocket science. Uh, in, order, in, in order to understand this SLT, you don't need any SAP basis knowledge. You don't need any HANA knowledge. It's very simple. Today, you are able to create your RFC connection on your own, not by the admin person. If you are going to admin person, just because of the privilege. But still, you know that what is SLT. Sorry, what is the RFC connection or not, right? Yes, because of we may not have the privilege to create that connection, we are reaching the basis person today. 
otherwise you can manage on your own okay hana admin is different uh, at this point of time we don't need sap hana admin admin means hana admin what will cover means any other database administrator sql server administrator oracle database administrator those kind of administrators can learn sap hana administration okay we will discuss about sap so from the different source systems you have to use as a etl business objects data services or sap data services whatever they called as etl tool extraction transformation load and then slt system sap landscape transformation this is a real time replication server if you use the bods that is a scheduled job you need to schedule a job to load the data from the source to hana database if you select slt the moment when you change anything in the source system immediately in a seconds will be updated into hana database meaning that you don't need to schedule a job to monitor to load the data into target system slt will do that immediately it will replicate the change yeah, real. okay why we are using this as any database directly cannot communicate with the source system and cannot directly communicate with the target system so obviously you have to use some connectors or something like a middleware or xipi you are using to pass the idaps like the same here i am using bods and slt to load the data into hana database once the data is there in the hana database as a front end as a user interface i have sap hana studio like how you have told ms sql server studio like the same here i have a hana studio as a user interface i'll get access to the database then i can create the database tables views triggers along with that i will create hana information models what are attribute views analytical views calculation views hana modeling concept we will discuss on top of this we have sap business objects as a reporting tool to create the reports so as a stand alone hana consultant your job is going to be to connect with the source system different source systems using data services and slt then load the data into hana database and use the hana studio for the modeling purpose then create the business objects reports database is just a database it will it cannot extract it cannot report after storing the data after modeling the data you have to connect with the business objects reporting tools dashboards crystal reports whereby you need as predictive analysis all these reporting tools so you can use even micro strategy reporting also on top of hana data that doesn't mean only be as sap would like to promote their own products majorly they are promoting this business objects it doesn't mean you should use only bobj reports on top of hana you can use micro strategy also you can use cognos also is that clear what is stand alone native hana consultant role is going to be yes now we'll come to this simple architecture part when we purchase sap hana software from sap az company this is the green color box we'll get it. after purchasing the hardware from ibm and all we have the hardware vendor we'll purchase this hana box from sap az company so there are different source systems where we will use for the as a source and we just discussed about real time replication data that is nothing but slt or bods that is nothing but etl using these two methods we are loading the data into sap in memory database that is what sap hana database in the beginning itself we discussed hana database will support row based and column based tables whatever the data you loaded either will be row store or column store what is the difference between these row store and column store? for example i have some table here sales for a region wise year wise sales if i would like to read for the central detail as a traditional database it will start to read from first row and it will cover all the columns again second row it will cover all the columns 
So it will complete to read all the rows in the table. By the way of covering all the rows, it is reading all the columns also in fact. But it's a row based. That is why it is taking longer time. But still HANA will support. Because HANA is going to be database for all applications. Not only for data versioning applications. Okay. And by default in the HANA database, there is a column store tables, column store views. Column store tables, column store views. So as it is creating column store tables, it will read only the columns, the combination of columns which you are looking for. That will not read unnecessarily what, you, what does not require. This is why HANA database is faster as a column store. Second one, allocation engine and planning operators. In the SAP HANA database, there are multiple engines to process the data. There is a row store engine. There is a column store engine. There is a column store engine. There is a OLAP engine. There is a join engine. There is a calculation engine. All these engines will help HANA database to process the data faster. And this HANA software is created to use the capabilities of the hardware also. It will run your query on multiple nodes, on multiple nodes and a parallel basis. For example, in a star schema, you have different dimension tables, center fact table. When you execute the query, first that will hit on the fact table, thereafter to the dimension tables as a sequential, as a sequential. Whereas in the HANA database, for the same concept, for the same star schema concept, central fact table surrounded by dimension tables, when you execute the query, it will hit on the, all the tables at the same time. Your query will be divided into a set of sub-self statements and it will open multiple threads on multiple nodes. Parallel processing. Parallel processing. Where you can understand all these So this is what our HANA studio. Here you can see that <clears throat> like this, there will be, if there is a cluster system, there will be multiple nodes. Even in the single system, also multiple nodes will be there. If you have more index servers, you can understand very easy. There will be multiple nodes that will take the load balance. Okay, that will help to run the data faster as a parallel process. As a front end, HANA Studio just now I have opened as a user interface to do the modeling and to monitor to create database objects and all. Finally, reporting with the people. That is what the architecture. In the deep level also will go that. This is just like a basic. Thing. So why HANA database is faster? First thing is use hardware. Second one is in memory, third one is multi thread parallel processing system. Just now we discussed about fourth one is HANA models as a column store views and column store tables. So, because of this. 
Hana is going to be faster. I think someone has asked me a question. For a cheaper price, there is no cheaper price. If uh, Hadoop is going to be um, $30,000, if really they want to give the competition for SAP, I mean, if SAP would like to give competition to other person, they'll come down to $20,000. There is no cheaper enough price. Price is just their purpose. Regarding price, uh, we don't need to think about that. The way how it is providing the benefits compared to other products, that is only we have to think about here, not about the price. Who has asked this question? Nagarjuna or uh, Riti, right? Hello? No, it's not me. Uh, Somebody else. Ramesh? Probably. He left, I guess. Okay. Then. Fine. So this is what? HANA database is faster because of these reasons. And in a typical landscape, you'll find SAP ECC as a source system and SAP BW and any other non-SAP system also. Can be IBM product, Oracle product, PeopleSoft, any other product. If your source is SAP ECC, if you create a sales record or change the record, something like that, if you want to replicate the same thing into HANA database immediately, the only one option that is SLT. The only one option SLT. There is no other option to get the real time data. Can you repeat once again? The moment when you create any new record or change any record, the source system, if you want to get that replicate into HANA database immediately, the only option is SLT, real-time replication. SAP landscape transformation or system landscape transformation. That will be loaded immediately. Whereas, if you have non-SAP application, I am talking very much clearly, application. When I say application, that is running on some database. Because in the application, already the data is being modeled as a table. So HANA will support to replicate the tables from different source systems, different applications. Salesforce CRM is an application. I worked on IBM system, like a Maximum, or some any other Oracle products, Oracle financials, inventory, anything application. Whereas if you have SAP BW, you have to use business objects data services as a ETL2. Because in the BW, that is a multi-dimensional system and earlier SLT was not supported. These days SLT is supporting, but still it is comfortable to go with the data service. I'll explain why we have to go there. Today, BW also is supporting by SLT. Okay. Whereas, uh, yeah, you know, yep. Uh, when you mentioned that SLT system, uh, when I'm using SLT system, the real-time data will be copied from the ECC system to mm. my HANA system, right? Mm -hmm. So, at this point of time, is my backend of backend database of uh, ECC system is HANA system or no. uh, any regular system? Traditional. Oracle, oh, hello. MS SQL, MaxDB, anything that can be traditionally. Okay. That doesn't mean only on BW. Okay. okay. Yeah. And if you have any non-SAP system, you can use data services as ETL. You may have doubts when I can use SLT, when I can use BODS. I will clear that. You have SAP HANA Studio as a front end to connect with the database once data is loaded. As an administrator or developer, I'll access from studio to do administration activities and to do monitoring activities or to development activities. And the same database can be accessed by end user using a simple Microsoft Excel reporting tool or any of the business objects reporting tools. Like as we discussed, we by SQL reports, dashboards, and all. Okay. 
that is what stand alone hana concept stand alone hana concept now come to this replication part as we discussed this figure based etl based extractor based dxc meaning that so trigger based replication i think but sld replication which we are discussing right from the beginning i think ready your question will be answered here see that you have purchased sap hana box separately you can purchase sap slt as a separate system or you can purchase along with sap hana system that will include your license part which license you are purchasing initial time you don't i mean you did not realize about slt system later on you realize that then you can purchase no problem otherwise these are the additions which are giving you slt system along with the sap hana license that doesn't mean they are giving free they are charging for that okay so if you purchase hana enterprise edition insight edition hana real time edition hana edge edition hana limited run time edition for applications and for pw if you purchase any of these editions they will give you along with the same hana license slt replication server also you will get if you are purchasing a basic hana then you have to purchase slt separate system understand slt also is like our same sap ecs netweaver system running a web abstract and you have your separate box as a source system it can be sap source system or it can be non sap source system first thing is that clear about landscape we have a target as hana source as sap or non sap using slt system to replicate the data this slt either you can purchase after some time or you can purchase along with sap hana so using uh, slt only tables can be replicated or any packages or uh, pw info queues can be replicated at this point of time only tables can be replicated using sap from the source side slt yeah. using slt only tables can be replicated replicated not the packages okay. or something else okay okay so first develop the connection between your source and slt that is what rfc if your source is sap source system remote function call connection if that is third party then create the db connection database connection between slt to hana that is obviously database connection three different systems three different boxes we created a landscape we created the connections so far is that clear for everyone now yes there is a button in the hana database for example as you are using the interface uh, studio replication button like how you are scheduling the job execute the job like the same there is a button to replicate the data when i say replicate it will send a message to slt system and then this slt will create a database trigger in the source system database which is a procedural code by this database trigger it will create a logging tables by database trigger it will create logging tables these are technical tables dynamically instantly will be created for each table one logging table will be created for each table one logging table so whenever you are updating any record whenever you are inserting any record in your application tables in the source system will be logged into this logging tables then will be read into slt system doing the transformations automatically then updating into hana database target as long as this database trigger is keep alive it will continue to replicate the data if you delete the database trigger it will stop to log the changes so we will discuss what happen if our system down what will happen if slt down what will happen if ecc down 
what are the precautions you have to take? We'll discuss all these scenarios. Already, uh, is that clear about SLP? If you have a flat file, it will not support. Hadoop file system will not support. XML will not support. PW extractor will not support. Is that clear? Ready? Because you've been yes, yes. asking about this. Okay. Yeah. Now, whatever unsupported for this SLT, that should be supported by ETL. Because data services is basically ETL tool, like your Informatica having your data stage, something like that. What basically ETL can do that? It will connect with the different types of sources and it will load the data into different types of targets. Meanwhile, that is doing the structured cleansing, data validation. All these activities can be performed via ETL. So you can extract using your BW data source extractors or your open hub destination or any other open files like a uh, MS Excel simply flat file or any other third party databases, XML type data, web data, Hadoop file system data. Everything will be loaded using business objects data services into HANA database. Okay. These are the two scenarios in the real time you will come across very frequently. I don't say even very frequently. That is a mandatory. That is a mandatory. So these are the different replication methods which you can use to replicate the data into HANA database from the source. One is SLT. Just now we discussed. Second one is data services. Apart from these, there is a product called SciBase that is also SAP product. You can use SciBase replication server. If you think about the SciBase, before acquiring by SAP, SciBase was itself a separate company. They are promoting good and they sold off good, good amount of uh, installations. Almost every bank 75 to 80 percent banks are using Sybase. Strategically, SAP is not promoting Sybase as they are promoting HANA database. Because still there are some loopholes should be covered in HANA. Because HANA is just like a penetration stage today. It has to improve a lot, a lot. In terms of OLAP point of view, in terms of reporting point of view, data evolution point of view, Sybase is a matured product rather than HANA. Very matured product. Everyone has agreed that. That is the reason SAP today is maintaining low profile for Sybase. Today, you don't see many jobs for Sybase. Earlier, there were a good number, amount of jobs. Very strategically, they are promoting this SAP HANA. Slowly, what they are doing that, there is, actually, there is no monopoly. But still, they are trying to create monopoly for this SAP HANA database. Today, they are requesting you to purchase HANA database. Down the line, after five years, even customers are also getting prepared themselves to purchase this. They'll force you to purchase SAP HANA by removing the support for some third party databases. It's a very classic and simple example for everyone. I can give that in India, uh, three, four years back, Honda has released Passion Pro bike. Earlier, there was self motors only for uh, this Bajaj and uh, Honda one, not Hero Honda one. Then Hero Honda has started to give the self for the Passion Pro also. But many customers were not interested about to purchase that one. Still, people who are interested to purchase only Passion Plus. What they have done? They have killed that product to promote Passion Pro Bike. That is a product killing stats in the marketing. Like the same, SAP will remove the support for third party components. If you don't purchase SAP HANA, then obviously one option you have to purchase that. Okay. Sybase also you can see in the real time. And sorry, there is a new one, uh, smart data access. The other one is smart data access. 
which they have given from SPS 6 onwards. If you observe this data services, Sybase, EODS are transferring the data physically. Physically, they are transferring the data. Whereas smart data access, that is not transferring the data. That is just like a creating a connection to the source virtually. You are able to view the data from the studio itself. Still, you can use the tables in the HANA model. So we will see complete practically SLT, complete practically data services, complete practically data HANA smart data access. These three methods to replicate the data. Okay, as we don't have landscape uh, side base, so that would be difficult for me to cover, but still I can give some inputs on it. Because there are multiple ways to load the data. That is the reason I am trying to explain to you. That doesn't mean only BODS and SLT will cover. Different customers will have different landscapes. So this is data services design and look and feel. You have different source tables and you can do the transformation mappings and update the data into targets. Okay. And this is what DXT. We'll see that uh, this is basically for the data source based extraction for BW prospective. We'll discuss about that. We'll see that DXC configuration also. Three ways. Along with more data access. Except sideways, you can see everything as a practical situation. So as a HANA modeling, uh, we'll create HANA information models, attribute view, analytical view, calculation views. Along with your regular database tables, database triggers, views, and everything is common. We will use import and export to transport the models between development to VAT, VAT to production, something like that. So this is what attribute view look and feel. Using the studio, you can insert multiple tables and you can use the joins like a right inner join, inner join right outer, left outer, pull outer, text join, whatever the joins SAP is saying that. And now what will happen in a traditional database, when you execute the query on this view, it will read entire data from these two tables. But what happened in the HANA database, whatever the columns you are making as your output columns, for this SAP HANA database will create a column store view on top of this. So that it will read only these columns in the report inside. That is why it is faster. That is what column store view and column store tables in fact. Analytical view, your star schema concept, or uh, where we are sharing the attribute views with master transaction data. Info cube concept in the data warehouse. And then calculation views. These are script based or navigation based. If normal modeling is okay, no problem. Otherwise, we need to write standard and CSQL, DDL, DML, DCL statements can be used to create the script processes. Like how you are writing your app today, in HANA we will write SQL statements. Okay? If that is navigation, that is okay. I mean, if you are comfortable with the just graphical output, you can create the graphical outputs. Once models are created, finally we will give the authorization, row level security. I mean, we will restrict the user to see limited data for a company wise, for a fiscal year wise, for a region wise, something like that. And how this code is executing when you are using database as a HANA database. Today, you are writing your web app, application uh, layer level, advanced business application program. Then that is going to the database to take the data. And then that is coming back to the application, executing the code. At this time, that is generating some memory over there and taking some long time to execute the data and leading to dumps. Whereas in the HANA database, still you are writing your code at the application layer level that is going to execute at the database layer level and only the result is transferred to the application layer level. See, you can do performance tuning at the three levels, application, database, OS. So now you don't worry about the application layer level performance tuning. It is always better to do the performance tuning at the source level, anything it can be. That is why that is pushing down today. 
So we will write SQL script here. And there are specifically CE based functions. Calculation engine. CE stands for calculation engine based functions. So anyhow, they are going to remove these functions. Probably from SP10 or SP11. Because SAP has not found that. This is very much comfortable compared to SQL. By default, SAP is using all these engines. Column store engine, join engine, OLAP engine, calculation engine. By default, they are using that. If you create as a front end, attribute view, analytical view, calculation view. But still, there is no point to create using SQL statement. And even customers are not comfortable to use this code. Very limited customers has used. So today, SAP is decided to remove this. But it will take in place probably in the next service pack, SPS 10 or 11. But still it is available. But down the line, it will not be available. But still we will cover both of them. Finally, how it can be reported? Using a Microsoft simple SQL or any part of business objects reporting tools. That is what we are discussing about crystal reports, dashboards, or crystal for enterprise profile. These are traditional tools. Along with these new tools, we will cover predictive analysis and Lumira and Design Studio as a new reporting tools on HANA. You can see the job descriptions even HANA with Lumira, HANA on Design Studio, something like that. Not HANA on Design Studio means as a HANA as a database, reporting tool as a Design Studio, something like that. So this is what the complete landscape of your, of your standalone hub. From the different sources, you can use either SLT or ETL to load the data into HANA database, connect your database to the studio, then create the HANA models, then create the viewer reports to present. That is what a standalone hub. Whereas it is application powered by HANA, the second model, which we said that, I said that, we discuss, we will discuss about application powered by HANA. So earlier what was happening, our SAP BW system is running on traditionally third party database. Let it be Oracle, MySQL, MSS. Then they had some problems, their back scores are running slow. Their info cube loadings are taking longer time. ESO loadings are taking longer time. So initially they thought to, to improve that at least query response time. In a BEX analyzer, one of the BW reporting tool, if you execute a query, believe that it will take at least 10 minutes for some time. Even after 10 minutes also, that will get into not responding mode. You have to run, you have to run that report again. That is the reason SAP has thought that addition to your SAP BW box to add a NetWayWare BW Warehouse Accelerator box. BW Warehouse Accelerator. BW Accelerator. So what that was doing that, that was loading all the data from BW system to BW Accelerator box. So what does this BW Accelerator box consist of? This calculation engines, aggregations, indexes, because by default, in the BW warehousing Excel data, it will store the data in the index format. Due to that, BW reports were started to run something faster compared to earlier. But still, they want to see complete change in the BW system. Okay. What is that? It is earlier. They added along with your traditional BW2, BW warehouse accelerator, then all this BW data will be loaded into BW Warehouse Accelerator, then that is reporting the patch report. But today, they completely removed that third-party database. Today, BW systems are running start to on SAP HANA database. This is what down the lane, all the SAP ECC systems or BPC systems or anything, CRM systems, everything, all the applications will be run on top of SAP HANA data. If you look at the um, evolution of SAP HANA database, it was a combination of pre-start time. That is a one of the database which was suitable for the row-based. That was got purchased by SAP in 2005. 
This is the reason SAP HANA database is supporting the ROST OT. They have the text engine, text retrieval and information extraction. When they have started to use in NetWave 2004 as onwards. And they purchased MaxDB from uh, other company in uh, 97. And they work together with MySQL to give the computation to Oracle and MSSQL. But that was a failure product. So, combination of these three, whereas you can see Trex and BW Accelerator. From BW Accelerator thought, they started to develop HANA database. Combination of these three, SAP HANA database has started. That is how SAP HANA database has developed today that is application powered by HANA and we were discussing about HANA as a secondary database I think for AWAPAX can understand this easily in fact everyone can easily so just assume that You have your SAP ECC system that is running a third traditional database like Oracle, MS, SQL, and all. When you write your ABAP function module or program that is going to read the data from the database, then coming back to the application and running the report that is taking longer time. That is a problem for me. I need to somehow improve that. This is not application powered by HANA. I am saying that very clearly. Like the same, how they have added a BW Warehouse Accelerator box to a SAP BI system. Like the same, for this SAP uh, ECC system, I will add HANA Accelerator box. HANA Accelerator box. Then what I can do that from this ERP, I mean ECC to accelerator box, I will create a RFC connection. Okay, just try to visualize. Forget about that, leave it aside for some time. Then meantime, what I'm doing that, I have a HANA database with me and then using this SLT real-time replication, using this SLT real-time replication, I have transferred all these tables into HANA database. Okay. Now, what will happen? Again, I'll give from accelerator to HANA studio, HANA database connection. Now, when I execute this ABAP report, this will not execute at your existed database. This will read the data from the HANA database and then it will give the report result at the same ECC. So your primary database will remain same, but that is not using for your reporting purpose. HANA database is using reporting purpose. Is that clear? Hello? Yes. So yes. that is what the scenarios which I am going to cover, which I worked on in the real time. 